Remember when I solved that cogging issue on that brushless Trans Am by basically creating the world's most simple torque converter with a few magnets? Yeah, I think I might have done it again. Hello everyone and welcome! I've got a quick video for you all today that's a little different, but hopefully at least mildly interesting to all of you scale nerds out there. Anyone who's watched this channel for just about any amount of time is probably well aware of the various 124th and 125th scale model card RC conversions that I've done, utilizing a variety of tiny 3D printed components. One popular component that can be seen in many projects is our MA-10 axle assemblies. These axles are designed to be as close to a true 124th to 125th scale replica as possible. Notice on this 39 Chevy Coupe that I recently built, the rear axle fits right in place of the one that was included in the model kit. Attempting to use a quote-unquote 124 scale axle from something like an SCX24 or Enduro24 would not at all be possible. Of course, not that there's anything wrong with those axle designs. In fact, they're comparatively more durable and better suited for rough driving. It's just in the world of RC, most crawlers advertised as 124 scale tend to be a bit on the larger side than a true mathematical 124th representation. This here though is a good illustration of why these axles are ideal for these types of super scale model car to RC conversions. They should fit right in place of where the one included with the model kit would be. I've designed these axles to have different widths. For example, you can see a relatively narrow one used on this AMC Gremlin drag car. We do sell some of these axles on our website, either as a standalone kit or included in some of our chassis kits like our FFR SC1 design. Thanks to the generous support of our many Patreon members, we have also made the STL files for these MA-10 axle housings available for download and 3D printing. Links of course are below in the description. One thing you may be noticing however is that these axles are only used in the rear for on-road type vehicles. For a long time, I never attempted to create a front steer axle like you would expect to see on a 4x4 vehicle, especially older ones like this K5 Chevy Blazer for example. There are a few reasons for this. First and foremost, there's already a lot of micro scale RC crawlers available on the market, especially in recent years. Everything from Axial SCX24s and FMS FCX24s to the smaller scale rigs like the Mini Z4x4s from Kyosho and the micro crawler kits from Orlando, among many other manufacturers in the 124th and smaller scale scene. There's no shortage of great micro crawlers out there, and I've certainly had a lot of fun with some of these trucks, many of which I've showcased here on the channel. For the diehard scale enthusiasts though, many of these rigs might leave a bit to be desired. For example, the FMS FCX line combines some great looking and generally quite accurate hard bodies with a capable crawler chassis. Though many of these bodies tend to be quite a bit larger than the advertised 124 scale, and certain elements like the larger wheel openings and portal axles seen on this K5 Blazer for example, might turn off some hardcore scale enthusiasts. RC Four Wheel Drive's 124 scale Trailfinder 2 was probably the closest to being a true 124 scale representation that could be had in ready to run form. Unfortunately, almost non-existent low speed modulation and a high initial price of about 170 US dollars turned off a lot of hobbyists. While I've yet to order one myself, some of the most impressive and accurate micro crawlers I've seen have been kits sold by Orlando. They're definitely on the smaller side, with many of these kits tending to be advertised as about 132nd to 135th scale. However, if you look up the dimensions of many of the components, such as the axles and wheels, they would look right at home on many 124th and 125th scale plastic models. My point is, there's a lot of options when it comes to micro scale 4x4 vehicles, parts, and chassis. While most of those crawlers are designed with more of a focus on off-road performance, some could certainly be suitable for a model to RC conversion. As you may recall, I used a RC four-wheel drive Trailfinder 2 as a base for this custom 1980 Dodge Ram Charger build with pretty good results. Of course though, that didn't stop me from tinkering with my own axle design based on the MA-10 axle housing. In between working on the design of our soon to be released CTC-01 commercial truck chassis, I was also tinkering around with this steerable MA-10 axle. At some point I'd love to do a fully custom 124 scale crawler build, or maybe more accurately a trail truck build, incorporating the same amount of detail that I've been able to accomplish with some of the on-road vehicles that I've built and showcased previously on this channel. This axle design here could certainly help make that happen. Let me start by giving you an overview of the design. First of all, just like with any other MA-10 axle, this is as close to being a true 124 scale representation of the real thing as possible. 
Obviously, some things had to be thickened or made larger so they wouldn't be too fragile or difficult to 3D print. Overall though, not bad when comparing them to the kit axles included with that 124 scale 1980 Dodge Ram Charger. It pretty much has the look that I'm going for, particularly with that offset differential housing. Most of the real world 4x4 trucks that I see, whether it be a Jeep, SUV, or pickup, the differential is not located in the exact center on the front axle like it would be in the rear. I assume this is in large part so that the front drive shaft and differential housing doesn't come into contact with the engine and transmission. Many manufacturers are replicating this detail in 110 scale, but I've seen few smaller scale RC crawler chassis with offset front axles. There are some options out there, but not a whole lot. Sliding that diff housing off to the side was easy. Making the axle so it would be able to steer though, that took a bit more thinking. The obvious choice for transferring power from the axle to the knuckle would be using something like a U-joint or CV joint. You know, like every other crawler or even real truck ever built. The problem though is that these axles are so small, it would be pretty hard to make or 3D print a joint small enough while still being sufficiently durable. Probably not necessarily impossible, but at least very difficult. Sourcing a pre-existing axle or U-joint could have been an option, but it wouldn't be exactly what I want, and I really wanted to try and figure out a cheap DIY solution. So here's where I introduce yet another stupidly simple and cheap idea, springs. From magnets to springs. Seriously, after a lot of time spent brainstorming, tinkering, and trying to figure out what the easiest, cheapest solution would be, I found that connecting the threaded axle shaft to the piece of M2 hardware that the wheel and knuckle are connected to, which is a small spring, seems to work surprisingly well. I guess you could call this a very basic DIY spring coupling. As you can see, the springs are able to transfer power as I spin the pinion gear. Even as I steer the axle, power can still be transferred. I can actually get quite a bit of steering angle if I really want to push it to the limit, but I've snapped the springs on a few occasions, pushing the axle to its absolute limit. So if you'll forgive me here for this demonstration, I'll just stick to a more reasonable steering angle. You can see from that glue buildup, I've had to re-glue the spring on a few occasions, which isn't exactly fun. But this is yet another wow this actually works moment here in the workshop. I'm not sure if you can get much more simple than this. So have I cracked the code? Should we all be replacing our CV joints with springs? No, definitely not. Let me be clear, I'm pretty sure this is a very specific use case for this type of setup. If you want to build a crawler with even the slightest hint of off-road capability, and it's going to weigh more than your typical plastic model kit, I don't think you're going to get very far using springs to connect the axles. I haven't played with this setup too much, but as you can probably imagine, you have to strike a nice balance of a spring that's solid enough to transfer the power, while flexible enough to allow the steering knuckles to move from left to right without too much resistance. You either strengthen the connection between the inner and outer axle, but have too much resistance for the steering knuckle to move easily, or you loosen the connection to let the wheel steer with minimal resistance, but then there's tons of slop between the rotation of the outer axle and the inner one, and that spring could probably just become uncoiled. If you get into a bind, I could see a situation where those springs could uncoil, if not just break off, and now you have the fun experience of repairing an axle about the size of a Cheeto. And I'm not talking about the puffy kind. Now one area that could probably be greatly improved is here I'm only using super glue to secure the spring in place. The strength doesn't seem too bad, however I would imagine using a stronger adhesive, such as a jewelry glue, specifically designed for bonding metal, would likely help reduce the risk of the spring breaking off the axle. Perhaps soldering the spring could be an even stronger option as well. Due to the added resistance the springs put on the steering, I'm wondering if a stronger steering servo than the tiny around 2 gram servos I usually use will be a requirement. That really wouldn't be a big deal, as it wouldn't be that much more difficult to hide a slightly larger servo, but something I'm keeping in mind. Obviously I don't know a whole lot yet, since I'm still in the early stages of messing around with this setup, but it does seem like it could have some potential for the diehard scale 4x4 model builders. I'm actually pretty excited about this setup, as this joint was really the last thing preventing me from building an ultra scale 124th or 125th scale RC 4x4 with the same attention to detail and accuracy that I've done on some prior on-road projects. Making a working 3D printed rear axle and leaf springs is no big deal. Been there, done that. A transfer case, whether divorced or not, would be very simple to design. Just have an input for the motor, and then one output going towards the front and one towards the rear. Getting a working front steer axle is sort of the last hurdle, but now I at least have something to try out. A fun little discovery that I thought I'd share, 
I hope you find it either helpful if you're crazy enough to do a similar project, or at the very least amusing. Don't expect to see any small scale 4x4 chassis builds anytime soon, as right now my primary focus is getting the CTC01 files out, which will be happening very soon. This was just a little side quest I was working on when I need to take a break from other projects. But if this is something that you're interested in seeing more of, hit the like button on this video and let me know below in the comments. This is certainly a design and a topic that we can revisit in the future. For now though, please be sure to stay tuned as we've got some great STL files and build videos in the works, which will be coming very soon. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.